What's good? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Byte. It's all the good and bad inside the world of Apple and the big, big news this week. Well, according to Recode's John Pakskowski, Apple will unveil its wearable device on September 9th alongside of the next iPhone. That's right. If it wasn't already, the hype machine will be at an all-time high. Now, Recode was the first to break news of Apple's September announcement just for the iPhone a couple weeks ago, and the new wearable will predictably make use of Apple's HealthKit fitness platform and HomeKit for connected devices, but they aren't really referring to it as a watch. Now, some of you are saying, no way, we haven't seen any iWatch parts leak out yet. But if you remember, the very first iPhone was announced in January of 2007 at Macworld, and it didn't end up going on sale until June of that year. That's a six month time period. And all those rumors of a release date in 2015 could still be true. We know Apple will have some final working models to show off, but six months is a huge window of time before it hits the supply chain and all those leakers get a hold of it. Now they definitely have other projects in the work that we haven't seen, like eye shoes. And you know how I know? Because they already made eye socks. Now, I'm just curious to see how they're going to make it stick with consumers. I'm still looking for them to give me a real reason to care about this iWatch, but the ninth is going to be a big deal. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. And that other device that will be announced on the ninth, it's uh, something called the iPhone. Now there's more evidence we might finally see an NFC chip after images of the logic board have leaked out. A Mac Rumors forum member compared the NFC chip believed to be used with its 5mm by 5mm size and its 32 terminals for connecting and found the spot on the logic board for both the 4.7 inch and 5.5 inch iPhones where he believes the NFC chip will go. Now you'll notice the middle logic board, which is the iPhone 5S, has no such place for this chip. So we'll find out soon if Apple does include this and makes a push to be the true mobile wallet I've been waiting for. It might be time for the 128 gig iPhone to also see the light of day after leak schematics by Geekbar suggest Apple may be preparing to release the highest capacity storage on an iPhone that people have been begging for the past two years. An accompanying parts supply list shows NAND flash modules for 16 gigs, 64 gigs, and 128 gigs, but no 32 gig storage size. Also, we're still expecting the big A to drop another announcement sometime in October for iPads and possibly some small upgrades to the Mac line, but rumor reports say a couple of things will have to wait until 2015. Bloomberg claims Apple is planning to launch the long-rumored 12.9-inch iPad dubbed the iPad Pro by all of us in early 2015 after recent rumors said the project had been put on hold. Now, this tech unicorn has been talked about as far back as mid-2013. And that thinner 12-inch MacBook Pro with a Retina display will launch at the end of this year or sometime in 2015, according to Digitimes, who likes to throw out a report here and there to keep their name in the news. So think about this. They're basically giving themselves a one-year and four-month window for a product to come out. Nice, guys. Now, this is something everyone should pay attention to. If you have an iPhone 5 that has horrible battery life and you kept complaining about it and everyone kept saying you're just being a big baby, you're a big baby. You aren't. Now, Apple has initiated an iPhone 5 battery replacement program to replace the batteries of a small percentage of iPhone 5s sold between September of 2012 to January of 2013. The Cooptown kids say it only affected a limited serial number range, and you can check that out for yourself at this website. But come on, Apple, it's clear. You've known this for at least a year, and now you're willing to do a replacement for those same customers who are ready to buy a new iPhone 6 because of that battery issue. That's a bad apple. <laughs> and for those of you on YouTube that are giving me a bad apple because one of our episodes uploaded twice, do you think I have control over that? I don't. So bad apples on all of you. <laughs> really, that's mean and Hurts my feelings. But I do feel better after seeing all the great responses from all of you that took part in the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. And if you took time to donate, that's great as well. So thank you to all the Apple Biters because I know and you know that there's really so much more to this life than all these tech toys. So on that note, I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time for the Apple Bite. Okay, Brian, that's a wrap. Oh, sweet. Let's see if I can get swing copters. Ah! <laughs> I love this.